right, freshmen, this is the last day of notes. We're going to talk about the end of the war. All right, so this is the Liberty Memorial. For those of you who've never been uh, downtown or haven't seen it, this is uh, down on Pershing, <laughs> named after the general who led us through World War I. And it is the official World War I museum for the United States. Um, there are some smaller ones, and uh, there is uh, kind of a smaller one in D.C., but this is the official World War I museum, and it's in our very own Kansas City. It was built in 1924. All right, so <clears throat> the war has ended, and we will now have a meeting in Versailles at the Palace of Versailles outside of Paris. The big four will meet. We got President Woodrow Wilson of the United States, Vittorio Orlando, the Prime Minister of Italy, Georges Clemenceau, the Prime Minister of France, and David Lloyd George, the leader of Great Britain, Prime Minister. Okay, so the problem you have here is that, um, you know, Wilson, uh, as we talked about, has a plan. Um, he wants to, uh, you know, ensure, make the world safe for democracy. He has this, you know, grand plan that he is going to come in and um, create this new peace treaty that will make things better. The problem he has is like, for example, Prime Minister Orlando, he wants territory. Um, Italy fought during the war for some territory uh, that the Austro-Hungarians had in the uh, eastern Alpine region. That's what he wants. Uh, Georges Clemenceau, uh, he wants to punish Germany for all the destruction that was caused to uh, the French territory. Remember, France, uh, northern and western France was the battleground for most of the war. And then David Lloyd George, he wants revenge as well. Um, even though the British did not have territory destroyed, they did lose 800,000 men. So, Wilson's plan, the 14 points, um, points 1 through 5 would eliminate causes of war, 6 through 13 would involve self-determination, and point 14 would create a League of Nations, okay? Uh, a body that would preserve peace and hopefully prevent future wars. Now, the problem is when <laughs> Wilson shows up with the 14 points, uh, the other three of the big four are like, yeah, this is too nice. We want to punish uh, Germany for what they did. We do not want to treat them like nothing happened. So um, it's too lenient, it's the perception. Uh, when the treaty is finally finished, uh, it's very harsh. It blamed Germany for the entire war. Uh, there's actually an article in the Treaty of Versailles that does that. It demanded that the Germans pay reparations or punishment payments, and then it will create a number of new nations, including Yugoslavia, which was part of, which got the land that Italy wanted. Okay, so the, the land that uh, Prime Minister Orlando wanted was given to a new nation of Yugoslavia, which angered him. And so um, we know the Treaty of Versailles was a big failure because, uh, yeah, the fact that it blamed Germany and made them pay reparations would give rise to Nazism because guys like Adolf Hitler would say, well, we never lost, we were stabbed in the back. And uh, while that wasn't totally true, um, the treaty did make it easy to say that because of how much it punished Germany. So for the German people, being blamed for the entire war in their mind was uh, unfair. All right, so back in the US, uh, Congress is not happy about this idea of the League of Nations. They do not want to get involved in other countries' affairs. And so when Wilson comes home, um, he's already told by multiple Republican leaders that the uh, you know League of Nations is a non-starter. It's not gonna happen. So Wilson is going to go to the public. He's going to travel around the country and promote the idea of the Treaty of Versailles. And as I talked about in my hybrid classes, um, <laughs> some of these days he was literally giving, you know, four and five speeches in a day. Uh, you know, traveling around by train, giving speeches from one town to another, and he was trying to overcome this opposition. Sadly, he, we will never ratify the treaty. And Wilson runs himself so ragged that late in 1919, he has a stroke. Now, we don't find out about how bad this is till later after he dies, but it appears the stroke was so bad that his wife and his doctor actually may have signed some of his um, documents that were supposed to be signed by the president. So we'll, we'll never know for sure, but there's, there is a book called um, Edith Wilson, the first female president, because she supposedly did some of the things while he was uh, incapacitated with a stroke. But uh, like I said, we'll never know the extent of that because a lot of the papers were burned. All right, so in America after the war, we also have a lot of economic turmoil. Cost of living is going to go up. There's a huge uh, increase in inflation. Jobs are scarce because soldiers come home and uh, the jobs have been taken by civilians and they want them back. And in some cases they get them back, but in other cases they don't. Uh, there's also a lot of labor problems. The unions had gained power during the war years. Uh, they would promised not to strike. But notice what happens as soon as the war's over, by the end of 1919, 
3,600 strikes had broken out. So um, unions may have followed their uh, decision not to uh, strike during the war, but after the war they for sure did. Uh, Seattle had a general strike, five-day strike involving 60,000 people. Um, it actually shut down the entire city, and that worried a lot of Americans because a general strikes were basically like, you know, the, the oil workers, the um, retail workers, all the different uh, industries all walk out at the same time. We've never really had those in America. This is one of the few exceptions that it occurs, but it has occurred in overseas in Europe, and it can often just devastate an economy. Uh, Boston has a police strike. 75% of police go on strike, and uh, the Boston criminals were, uh, you know, uh, thinking, hmm, we're going to have a good day. Um, what ends up happening is Governor Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge of Massachusetts, orders them back to work, and those who re refuse are fired, and in some cases, some were arrested, and he gives the famous quote, there is no right to strike against public safety in America. And then we also have a steel strike, but U.S. Steel will break the Union, and there's a number of violent clashes, and some people are killed. All right. So that frustration, the unrest, is going to spread also to cultural and social issues. Uh, we had 25 race riots break out in 1919. They refer to it as the Red Summer. Um, part of the reason was, again, um, African Americans were moving north, out of the south. Um, some of these northern cities uh, had never you know, seen African American people before, and so um, there's segregation and some violent incidents. Uh, the worst one was in Chicago where, and we saw this in a video we watched in class, for those of you who are uh, hybrid, uh, there was a uh, segregation on the beaches and a young man was, uh, had drifted in his boat over to a white beach and uh, he was hit with a rock and killed. And then when they arrested African-American men and not the white men who threw the rock, it started a riot that lasts two weeks, okay? And 38 people were killed. So um, yeah, the race riots in 1919, uh, the Red Summer really started because um, we've got you know soldiers coming home, uh, and I talked about this in class. You know, some of these um, African American soldiers came home with a chest full of medals, and you know they had been you know heroes overseas, and uh, whites in the South couldn't handle that. So there were multiple examples of soldiers who came home and got lynched in their army uniform. Uh, we also have the Red Scare, this fear that communists were going to seize power. So remember that the uh, Russian Revolution had occurred in 1917, and part of that was a call for a worldwide revolution. And so uh, there's this fear that, you know, communists in America were going to try to overthrow the government. Um, we also had a couple of bombings that occur. Um, we now think, and I put a picture of one here, this was the one at Wall Street. Uh, we now think those bombings were executed by a group of anarchists, you know, trying to uh, cause trouble, people who believe in no government. But they got linked with communists and with immigrants, you know, both groups kind of get linked with these. And then um, there is a bomb outside of uh, the Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer's house. It doesn't kill him, but it does, uh, blow off the hands of his gardener, and I think the guy died. And so after that, Palmer starts executing raids throughout the country and um, basically, you know, arresting anyone who they suspect of being a criminal, which in many cases was those who were minorities. And, you know, one, one guy said they looked at our last names, that's what they cared about. And during the Palmer raids, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, they found four guns. <clears throat> in all these raids they executed, they found four guns, and three of them had been purchased legally. All right, so with the disillusionment, the economic problems, the labor unrest, the racial tensions, World War One being over, and I didn't put this in here, but also we were in the midst of the pandemic, the uh, Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. So Americans were really tired of progressivism. And so when Warren G. Harding comes along and says a return to normalcy, uh, many people went into that. So Harding will defeat the Democrat James Cox. Um, Wilson wanted to run again, but due to his stroke, um, you know, <laughs> uh, probably not a good thing. And also he would have been running for a third term, which at that time was unprecedented. So uh, Harding is elected. He promises a return to normalcy. And we will move into the 1920s, which we already talked about last semester. All right, number one, <clears throat> why were the French and British and French angry about the 14 points? Two, why was Germany angry about the Treaty of Versailles? Three, why did America never ratify the League of Nations? Four, what was the Red Scare? Five, what was the Red Summer? And six, why was Harding elected in 1920? All right, so that'll be it for notes uh, for this unit. Uh, look for the test middle of next week. And again, I'll post it and I'll also post a video explaining what to do.